so in this tutorial i will uh, look at uh, a practical system a real system and uh, we will find out the impulse response of that and uh, we then we will use convolution and the impulse response to uh, to find out the response of uh, response of this system to other other inputs okay so um the system we look at is a familiar system uh, we will look at an rc circuit we've uh, we've studied the rc circuit in 6002x okay and uh, and so let's just fi first find out the impulse response okay so in this case my input will be delta of t this is delta of t and to find out the impulse response we will use the node method like we've done before so let this voltage be v and i want to find out the voltage across the capacitor this is v i've also already selected my ground node okay so let's set up the differential equation by using the node method so the current over here is c d v d t so i'm going to just call this r and c okay c d v d t okay plus v minus delta of t v2 is delta of t so i'll just substitute that v minus delta of t divided by r okay and this is equal to zero next what i'll do is i'll take this delta of t by r term to the right hand side okay and i will also divide the entire equation by c so in the end i will get dv dt okay um plus 1 by r c times v equals delta of t by r c right so this is my uh, differential equation in standard form okay and uh, to solve this i'll just use uh, uh, this is this is a linear differential equation and i'll just use a standard method to solve this um, i find that easier so to solve this we first find the homogeneous solution and the homogeneous solution is the integral of this term is the integral of 1 by rc so let's just find that so uh, let's just call this x okay i it's normally use we normally use the letter h but uh, h in our case stands for impulse response so i'll just say x of t equals integral of 1 over rc dt okay and this will give me t by rc okay and this is my uh this is my homogeneous solution to find the complete solution i uh, use the formula v of t okay and which is also equal to h of t so this is v of t equals e raised to minus x integral e raised to x times this term okay and this would be delta of t by rc okay plus uh, some constant and this is the constant of integration e raised to minus x now what i'll do is i'll actually ignore this uh, constant of integration because i will use limits here okay normally uh, in the in the standard method this would be a definite integral uh, this would be an indefinite integral okay uh, an integral without limits and we would have a constant of integration i will i will remove this constant of integration by using limits so my limits will be from minus infinity to t okay i'm interested in t now 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 as you can note uh, if you notice this is a delta function and we know that the integral when you have a delta okay if this is my delta uh, that is my uh, impulse function the the integral for t less than 0 is 0 because uh, this entire part is all zero all this the values of uh, the function over here are all zero right so any integral for t less than 0 is zero so it's only when i cross uh, the origin will i get uh, non zero values for this integral so i really don't need to worry about values of t less than 0 so i can actually change this constant the, the lower limit to 0 so i will have integral 0 to t right so in case you don't understand this let me know i'll explain it to you in the discussion forums okay so next we'll just substitute for x and we will get v of t equals e raised to minus t by rc okay integral of 0 to t e raised to t by rc okay and uh, sorry into delta of t and what i'll do is i'll just take this rc term outside so 1 over rc okay dt okay now to be uh, now to do the integration um, we won't really 
uh, we won't really need to do anything complicated if you notice uh, that this is an integral of some function multiplied by the delta function and uh, we know that uh, any function multiplied by delta of t okay would give us and if we integrate it we would give us the value of this function so this is our function multiplied by delta of t would give us so suppose this function is f of a f of t okay this integration would give us the value of the function at zero okay this is called the sampling property of the delta function and in case you don't understand this as well i'm not sure if this has been talked about in the lectures but this is called the sampling property so you integrate a function with delta of t when you do that you will get the value of the function at zero if i integrate the function with delta of t minus t naught suppose this was t minus t naught okay i would get the value of the function at at t naught okay so i'll just scratch this out for now so this would give me e raised to minus t over rc in sorry and uh, divided by rc right into the value of this function at 0 and the value at function of this function at 0 is 1 if i put the value of t over here as 0 i would get e raised to 0 which is 1 so this is my impulse response this is my impulse response okay and we've got our impulse response i'll also call this h of t okay so so what we see is the impulse response of this uh, of this rc circuit is nothing but a decaying exponential and we've seen this in 6002x already we already come across this uh, formula if you remember we when we discussed the impulse response we got precisely this answer and uh, i will also show this in simulation i have i actually um, i actually simulated this uh, with the uh, i actually built this circuit and i saw the results using a simulator and if you notice here i have a decaying exponential this is my output okay this is a decaying exponential right just as we expected and just to show uh, just to compare some values um you notice this is rc right okay and if you if you if you want to see the value of this impulse response is zero i would put t equal to zero and this numerator would be one and so my answer so h of h of zero or v of zero would be one over rc right and if you substitute the value of r and c okay if i put this 12k and 41.6667 it's um i would get the value of approximately two okay i would get an approximate value of two and if you notice um sorry wrong wrong curve uh, if you notice we have a value over here of 1.980 which is approximately two so our uh, simulation uh, results uh, agree with our calculations okay and uh, if you want to see the delta uh, if you want to see the impulse function um, what i did is i had to approximate the impulse function i couldn't get a real impulse okay uh, and i did that by using an input voltage of value 0 it was a pulse it's it's a pulse of uh, height 100 volts okay and uh, the duration is 1 by 100 seconds so that is 0 0.01 seconds so i get an area of 1 okay the property of the impulse uh, function is that the area is 1 so I get an area of 1, a height of 100 and a width of 0 0.01. It's not an exact impulse function, but it's an approximate impulse function and uh, it will do for our purposes. Okay, So as a consequence of this, uh, of this uh, approximation, you can see that the initial um, initial rise to 2 volts is not exact. It's, it's, uh, it's somewhat of a ramp. Okay, I Ideally, this would just be a straight jump to 2 volts. Okay, So let's move on. So this is our impulse uh, response. Let's now uh, talk about the step response. And uh, to do this, I will not use the differential equation uh, approach. I will I will use convolution. So if this uh, if this is our step response, and uh, so let's let's just first write the write the equation. So for con for convolution, I will call this uh, v sub u uh, of t. Okay, v sub u of t equals integral from uh, minus infinity. Okay, this should be minus infinity to infinity. Uh, u of tau h of t minus tau d tau right and uh, if this is my uh, u of t let me draw that again here okay for simplicity that's my u of tau and suppose i draw my h of t minus tau here now my h of t minus tau would be something like this right and this is t now so if t is less than zero my product so h of t minus tau into u of tau this product would be zero my product is non-zero only when i cross the origin so only if my h of t minus tau is something like this and uh, 
my product is non zero only from zero to t right so my convolution would reduce to integral zero to t u of tau is one so i will not write that down again and h of t minus tau is uh, one over r c e raised to minus t minus tau right t minus tau okay d tau and this is nothing but my impulse response and i have used h of t minus tau next what i'll do is i'll take this one by rc term outside the integral i will take this outside the integral i will also okay and let's let's just do that so v sub u of t equals 1 over rc uh integral of 0 to t uh integral from 0 to t and i'll also separate these uh, terms there are there is a there is a subtraction going on in this exponent so i will get e raised to minus t times e raised to oh and i forgot about this rc over here it's by rc e raised to minus t by rc and e raised to tau by rc d tau right and you notice that uh, there is no variable tau in this first term right so i can take this outside the integral as well so i will get 1 over rc e raised to minus t over rc integral from 0 to t e raised to tau by rc right and d tau if i integrate this i will get 1 over rc e raised to minus t by tau times 1 over 1 by rc right into supposed to be a parenthesis so e raised to tau by rc right and my integration from 0 to t and uh, i don't have place here so okay so rc and rc gets cancelled so let me make some place for me here so i'll just make some place right here okay so if i do the math you'd get e raised to minus t by rc this is just algebra multiplied by e raised to t by rc minus 1 right if i substitute the limits and if i take this e raised to minus t by rc term inside i get e raised uh, i would get 1 minus e raised to minus sorry i would get e raised to 1 minus t over rc okay and this is my step response and it's nothing new we've already seen this in again we've seen this in 6002x that um uh, when we give a step input we give a step input to our uh, rc circuit we will get uh, this rising exponential of this form so 1 minus uh, e raised to minus t by rc right so we've already seen this and let's just see this in sim simulation for completion okay so this is my step response so step input i'm not sure if you can see this input it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it rises to 1 and it continues to 1 it's a very thin blue line um can i can i can i make it more okay okay anyway so this is my step input and you can see that the response is this uh, rising exponential right and that's a step response nothing new we've already seen this let's next move on to the sinusoidal response and this will get a little complicated uh, our integration would get a little complicated and uh, let's just get right into it so my input is uh, so let's let's just uh, write the formula so v sub s and i use a subscript of s to uh, re realize that it's a sin sinusoidal input v sub s of t would be equal to integral from 0 to t sin let me use an input of sin omega t okay times 1 by r c e raised to minus t minus tau okay d tau uh, d tau right and uh, i got this uh, got the limits from 0 to t uh, the reason is quite simple uh, my sign okay uh, oh i forgot one more thing this is sin of t um l let me just rewrite this from the beginning so let me just erase everything okay my sinusoidal input uh, this is very important my sinusoidal input starts only from 0 there is no sinusoidal input uh, on uh, at the left of zero so it starts like this okay so my input is actually sin omega t times u of t okay so this is my input it's not sin omega t it's sin omega t u of t and this will actually complicate the integral quite a bit so what we'll do is we'll just go back so v sub s of t equals integral now because it's a u of t 
okay because it's a uft let me uh, let me draw the impulse response so this is my h of t minus t naught again we can only have uh, a non zero product of uh, a non zero product if we consider the limits from 0 to t right uh, anywhere outside this uh, our uh, product would be zero so we can just ignore it so we have limits from 0 to t and uh, from 0 to t my u of t is equal to 1 so i'm just going to write sin of omega t i'm just skipping a lot of steps here to make this quick we already uh, we're already 16 minutes into the video so um the sine of omega t times uh, 1 by rc okay this is my impulse response times e raised to minus t minus tau d tau right and uh, oh and this should have been a tau this should have been a sine omega tau sorry about that so i will take this 1 by rc term outside and i will take this e raised to minus t by uh, minus t by rc i forgot the rc over here e raised to minus t by rc term so i will take that outside so i will get v of s uh, v sub s of t equals 1 by rc e raised to minus t by rc integral from 0 to t sine uh, omega tau times e raised to tau by rc d tau right and this is my integration so this integration is fairly complicated if you remem remember the formula you can just uh, use that directly i didn't i didn't know the formula by heart so i used uh, i had to integrate this by parts or you could just use uh, wolfram alpha as well so i'm just going to write the answer here i'm not there's no place for me to integrate this by parts so v sub s of t will be equal to uh, this is fairly fairly big so this is equal to sine omega of t minus omega r c cos of omega t times e raised to minus t over r c okay plus r c omega e raised to minus t by r c okay and this whole thing is divided by r square c square omega square plus one okay and this is a fairly complicated uh, answer um just to just to analyze this you can see we have a sine term and we also are adding a decaying exponential right we are adding a decaying exponential so what does this mean uh, this means that if we have uh, if we have our decaying exponential right which is a uh, characteristic of the circuit we are actually superimposing the sign like this right so we will get something like this and later on we would actually you know settle to this value and that's that's what we'll see in the, the simulation okay so let's just uh, see the simulation and uh, before before uh, we actually see the simulation uh, just notice this uh, i have uh, if you i'm not sure if this will come in the video but i have these low frequency sign uh, the low frequency sign function um, which appears okay as an illusion or uh, whatever you would like to call it and i would like you to think about it um, we will see in the end of this course why why we see this uh, low frequency sign okay just think about it and if you know the answer uh, that's great so we see this uh, low frequency sign okay and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a problem uh, in systems okay in digital systems uh, okay, anyway so you can see that uh, the output is exactly what we expected you can see that it's a decaying exponential with a sine a sine wave superimposed on it it's actually a sine wave it looks like uh, some funny wave but if i just zoom in okay it didn't render properly initially this is our sine wave right so if i go from left to right you can see initially that uh, the sine wave is above zero and it slowly decays and it settles to the right value okay it's not yet settled it's slightly above but it settles initially settles to the right value okay so that's our sinusoidal input and uh, you may wonder you know this integration is quite complicated why bother so much so um, yes this integration is complicated and uh, much later in this course we will study a uh, technique called the laplace transform we will study laplace transforms which will greatly simplify this procedure okay we won't need to worry about all this integration so laplace transform involves looking at a table transforming this uh, huge uh, convolution into 
uh, a multiplication we will convert this convolution into a multiplication we will then use some simple algebra rearrange the terms and use another uh, table uh, I mean in fact use the same table and do an inverse uh, transform okay if it doesn't make sense to you don't worry we'll come across this later on so we'll use the impulse uh, we'll use the inverse transform and we'll get get the answer we want so it's actually a lot simpler okay so this is the sinus sinusoidal response let's quickly do the exponential response um, i'm already 20 minutes into the video so we will see the response of a decaying exponential and my exponential e raised to minus d by a okay and uh, let's just quickly do v sub e of t equals integral from 0 to t you know why this is 0 of t i'm not going to explain that again um, if you don't understand do let me know i will be happy to explain so e raised to e raised to oh this should have been tau sorry i keep forgetting that so e raised to minus tau by a times e raised to minus t minus tau by rc divided by rc d tau right so this is my convolution i'll again take the 1 by rc e raised to minus t by rc term outside the integral okay and this is integral from 0 to t e raised to tau by a uh, this e raised to minus tau by a sorry times e raised to tau by rc okay divided by d tau this equals 1 by rc times e raised to minus t by rc times integral from 0 to t e raised to minus is it minus no e raised to tau okay e raised to tau 1 by rc minus 1 by a d tau okay if i integrate this i will get 1 by rc times 1 by 1 by rc minus 1 by a times e raised to minus t by rc okay times i'm just directly going to put the very uh, limits of integration so this would actually give me e raised to tau 1 by rc minus 1 by a if i substitute the first limit i would get e raised to t times 1 by rc minus 1 by a and the second integral would give me minus 1 a second limit would give me minus 1 now if i multiply this over here okay this is minus t by rc sorry about that so if i multiply this term over here this t by rc term will go okay because this is minus t by rc okay and uh, if i substitute these two if i simplify these two terms i would simply get a divided by uh, a minus rc multiplied by e raised to um, minus t by a okay this is minus t by a minus e raised to minus t by rc okay and this is our answer so what would this look like so uh, for the values i have chosen okay for the values i have chosen my decaying exponential this has a very small time constant constant it has a time constant of 0 0.5 right so this will decay very slowly however for this one i used a very i made this decay very fast so this decays very quickly like this okay so it goes to zero so if i substitute this if i mean if i add these two i would get something like this okay it would jump up okay but then it would quickly drop down because this decays qu pretty quickly so it would quickly drop down and uh, it would decay uh, the same way approximately the same way as this okay so let's just quickly see the see the um, uh, see the result and uh, we can uh, finish off then so you can see this is my input and it quickly decays right it's a it's a it's a quickly decaying exponential input and our output is exactly what we predicted so we would have a rising uh, it, this would slowly rise and once it rises it will quickly drop down uh, it, it will sorry it will not quickly it will drop down to uh, it will drop down to zero um, just like our uh, impulse response so it would do drop down to zero like uh, like this e raised to minus t by rc term right okay so this is our uh, and this is our um, uh, our uh, uh, exponential response and uh, the reason i wanted to demonstrate this to you is because uh, many times uh, if we have our black box suppose we didn't know we didn't know what this uh, what this we didn't know that this was an rc circuit we had some black box now it wouldn't make sense so if you wanted to find the output for a variety of inputs it wouldn't make sense to do an experiment each time if you noticed at the beginning if you remember at the beginning of uh, 6002x um, professor agarwal uh, ta talked about uh, abstraction okay so if we talk about a mass and we want to put a force 
across it we wouldn't always do an experiment and you know tabulate values we wouldn't want to do that we know that force f is equal to mass times acceleration we would just use this formula and uh, and we would find uh, the acceleration for a variety of forces so we are doing the same thing we don't want to do an experiment each time and find out what the output is for a specific input so instead of doing an experiment we just do one experiment we find out what the output is for an impulse response and we use this to find uh, we use this in convolution so we use this in convolution and uh, use this formula so it's like using f equal to ma uh, 